Hello and welcome to another of Turtleton's tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at Minecraft switches and how we're going to get the most out of them and how to use them in a different means from their original purpose. First we're going to look at the different types of buttons we have available to us. Here we have a basic lever. As you can see, every time you press the lever, the output, which is represented by the blue block, toggles and it will stay in whichever state you leave it in permanently. With a button, when you press that, it will toggle the power on and after a short period of time, it will turn itself off. And finally, for completion, with a stone pressure plate, whenever you stand on the plate, power is provided to your output and stepping off shortly will cause the output state to turn off again. Now, the first design we're going to look at here to make the most out of our switches is an explicit OR gate. If I just circle around this, you'll be able to see the basic design. It's a symmetrical design. So what this circuit does is, whenever the inputs are explicitly different, that means different from one another, the output to the circuit will turn on. Now, it doesn't matter what sort of configuration these are in, or which order they are pressed, so long as they are explicitly different, they will turn themselves on. So where this design becomes incredibly useful is when you have two switches in two different locations and you want them both to independently be able to control a door or something else which is represented by this blue block here. Now this means that Whenever you toggle one switch, the output will change, regardless of what state the, the second switch is in. Now, what we can do is, if we destroy this second input, we can actually turn this switch into a button. You know, see, I've added a long delay for this redstone repeater. So what this means is, initially, the output will turn on and then it will turn off again and it will change every time the output changes. And this is because basically it takes a short period of time for this output to realize that it is actually the same and so it's it's a, effectively a button from a lever. Now we can add longer delays to this and control the length of time the button effectively turns on for and that's pretty handy. Now, making a button act like a lever is a little bit more complicated. This is a T flip-flop. If I just demonstrate it, you'll see that you press the button once and the output toggles. If we have a look at this, you'll see it's quite a complicated design. It has a large footprint and well, it's not inherently obvious as to what's happening with the circuit. But you can see that it does function. Now, I'm not going to go fully into the details of this. Instead, we can use the sticky piston design, which is, in my opinion, much better. So here you can see we have, uh, we've substituted a piston for our design. And I'll just show you it working again. You see the output is just as toggleable as before. This loosely works on the principle that if a single tick pulse is given to a sticky piston, it will draw in or push out the block, but it will not bring it back to its original starting position. And then we can allow pot power to propagate through the circuit and power our device. Now, in my opinion, this design is a lot easier to understand, and obviously it has a lot a lot smaller footprint, and in, again, in my opinion, a lot simpler to recreate. The final sort of switch manipulation design we're going to see is this design here, which is an RS NOR latch. And Whenever we press the button, 
it toggles the power to the same side as the button. So as you can see, we have light colored wool here, and this controls the light wool side here, and dark green wool controlling the dark blue side. So we can press this button once, and the power is now on this side. Note that the power is turned off on here, and pressing it again has no further effect. However, toggling it on this side will toggle this state on, rendering this state off. So this design is inherently useful when you want to turn something on with one switch and have it turn off with a completely different switch. Maybe open a door with a button, but have it close with a pressure plate. You'll find that most people use these designs to generally control doors. And as such, to sort of round off the tutorial, we're going to look at a basic way to include a lock into your design. Here we have a lever on a sticky piston and an independent circuit here to the output. As you can see, currently whatever we do to this circuit here has no effect on the output, even though power is trying to pass through it. That's because we have our locking mechanism in place. When the lever is, in this case, up, the piston is drawn back and down it's pushed forward and this will allow power to propagate through, as you can see when I toggle this. As such there. Removing the lock automatically closes the gate and turns the output off. So these designs are, give us a basic way of manipulating the levers and the buttons in Minecraft to give us something more and to make them more useful in a more varied fashion. And it's really important to note that these aren't the only designs available. If you go onto the redstone circuitry page on the Minecraft wiki, you'll be able to see an abundant array of different designs with different footprints and different levels of complication for all of these designs we've seen, plus several more. But hopefully in this tutorial we've seen some basic ways of starting off whatever it is you intend to do in Minecraft. So, this has been Turtleton's Tutorials. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.